In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a parallax background on any row in your Visual Composer. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, let's head into the screen capture and learn how to create a parallax effect using Visual Composer. I'll see you there. So the first thing we have to do to get the parallax effect functioning is create a page that's going to hold the effect. So we're going to click on pages or hover over it, click on add new. This new page, I'm just going to call it parallax effect. And I usually use the front end editor, but for this one, we use the back end editor just because you guys need to see both. So if you prefer the front end, you can do the same thing in the front end. If you prefer the back end, you're going to see how that works in the back end right now. So we're going to click on back end editor. And now we have our very familiar dialog box here. We click on add element and we add a row. All these items, they are always contained within a row. The row is the basic building block of Visual Composer. So we're gonna add a row and a parallax effect is in the background of a row. So we don't have to have any content for this to work. So we can just create the parallax effect in the row settings by clicking that pencil there. For the row stretch, I'm gonna show you what all these look like but I usually do the stretch row, which stretches the background of the row, but not the contents of the row. And you see what I mean later on in this video. I'm not gonna set any of these other settings right now. We're gonna scroll right down to parallax, choose simple, and then add an image. I've got this cool little image that I like right here. They say it's from Italy, who knows? It might be, it might not be. Now that image is in there, I can click on the set image button here at the bottom right and that will put the image into the background. Our parallax speed right now is 1.5, which means whatever rate we're scrolling, the parallax will scroll one and a half times as fast. And so it, it's not a big difference in effect, but you'll see a subtle scroll in this parallax speed. I'm gonna click on save changes so you can see what this looks like. Actually first, what we have to do is go back to the settings and go to the design options and set a height. I'm going to set a height of 250 pixels for the padding, top and bottom, and that effectively sets the height for the background. Click on Save Changes. If you don't do that, you will just see a thin bar of your row, and you're going to see it's not the way you want it to look. And to fix that, you add that padding like we just did there. So we have our background right here. It's, we can see that it's scrolling a little bit faster than we are, so we have a little parallax effect going on. Now, it may not be fast enough for your liking. So we can go back in here and we can click on the pencil and set the parallax speed to four. What you'll notice when you do this, let's refer back to here, this little tree is right on the edge. So keep that in mind when we refresh. This tree's at the edge and this, these tire tracks over here are right at the edge. When we change the speed, the site has to change the dimensions of the image to make sure there's enough space for the, the parallax effect to not uh, display a blank below the image that's available. So depending on the size of your image, your image may scale. So when I refresh this page, you may not see that tree anymore. In fact, we zoomed in quite a lot because this image just wasn't big enough to support that scroll speed. So if we go back into the editor again, click on the pencil, and if we choose 2.5, it's going to shrink the image again. It's got to shrink it to where it knows that it has enough parallax background to support the effect. And now we're zoomed out again. We can just barely see the, the houses up there. So it's not perfect the way it is now. I prefer to see those houses. So I'm just going to set it back to 1.5. You also have the option of manipulating this yourself by changing the size of the image. Like this 1.75. So if we, just hang on, let me, let me refresh this first. See how that looks. I think that one looks pretty good. We see that tree that was here is still out of the frame and these tracks go out of the frame. They don't end right on the edge anymore because we're still zoomed in. And what you can do is actually change the height of the image manually using the editor. So if we go into media library and we find the image, click it, Click on edit image. You can actually go in here and crop the image in various ways 
to make the sizing because when we did the, the zoomed in, we just had this bottom part of the field. But if we were to cut that field out and do it like this, for example, and then crop that image and click on save. Now we have a smaller image. This will apply to all of the images. Actually, let me click on edit again. On the bottom right here, we have the option of setting what this change applies to. And I had set for all image sizes. So this crop will affect all images. You can have it to just be thumbnails or all sizes except thumbnail. But now if we go back and refresh this page, it'll automatically update with the new image. And this parallax background will change because we have a different image. So that's zoomed in quite a bit because we shrunk the background. I actually like that better, the way it's zoomed in there. But if we go into the pencil here, we should be able to set this to four. It's still gonna zoom in, but hopefully it won't be just the boring field. We're gonna see a lot more action as in some houses and some trees. So refresh that. And there are some houses and trees as you get to the bottom. So as you can see, there's some trial and error involved, but that's how you can manipulate the parallax effect with speeds and cropping image sizes. And to get it just perfect, you might have to do some trial and error, unfortunately. Now take this one step further, you may wanna have some text overlaid on this background and that will actually change a lot of things. But first I'm gonna change it back from four to 1.7 in here because I wanna have more of the background visible. 1.75 actually. Click on this little plus icon. We're gonna add a custom heading by clicking on the yellow custom heading option here. I'm going to keep their demo text in there like this. I'm going to text align this to center. I'm not going to change any font sizes or colors. Actually, I'll change the color to a white so it stands out better. And then click on Save Changes. Now we're going to click on this little plus right here to make sure that the content that I add now is going to stay within that same row so it's still above the parallax. I'm going to click on Text Block. I'm going to keep the text how it is and just center it. Click on Save Changes and then click on update. Probably should change the color of that text, but that's okay. Go in here, refresh this page, and now we have a parallax background with the heading on it and the text in the background. And we, we set the, the padding to be 250 earlier, and that's 250 above and below the elements that are in the, the background or in that row. So 250 above the headline is how much we have and 250 below. We can go back in and change that very easily to get the, the ratios that you want by going back to the design options for the row and you can change the top to 150, keep the bottom the same. Maybe that'll look a little bit better. Click on update, refresh this page again. And I think it looks a bit better having that closer to the top. And that's how we can add anything over top of parallax backgrounds. But there's a couple options we didn't cover specifically. If we go back into the row settings, there are two options or there's this first one, the stretch row. The stretch row and content, I wanna show you what that looks like. It's probably not how you want it. So currently, this text and these text blocks are within the frame of where all the other content on the website is. If you choose stretch background and row, you can refresh this page, it's gonna stretch the background right to the edges. So you see the text goes right up to the edge. There's still some padding on the sides, but it's much wider than the actual content of the page, which ends you see this horizontal rule down at the bottom? That is where the content of the page, that's the width of the content of the page, and this goes beyond that because we chose the stretch background and content option. If we choose the one that has no padding, it's gonna put it right up on the edge. So currently we have this text that ends right here. There's some padding on the edge. We chose the option with no padding. If we refresh this page, that text is gonna go right as far as it can to the edge, and that was as far as it can go. On your theme, it might actually put it right to the edge of the browser, depending on what your theme is set up to do. And that is the stuff we can add. And like I said, we can add anything to overlay on this parallax background now. You can add buttons, you can add opt-in forms, you can add other pictures, whatever you want. As you know, Visual Composer is a premium plugin which you can buy from codecanning.net. If you buy it through the link below, I get a couple percentage of the purchase price. There's no extra cost to you, but what I'm gonna to send to you if you buy through that link is my complete Visual Composer course for free because basically I'm being paid by the Visual Composer instead of paid by you. So I'm gonna give you that course for free. All you have to do is send me the receipt after you purchase Visual Composer and I will get you access to that course. 
if you have a theme that has Visual Composer so you don't actually buy the plugin, you won't have access to the template library and a couple other features, but I will give you a heavy discount for the Visual Composer course if you have a theme that has Visual Composer. So if that's the case, just send me an email at bjorn at wplearninglab.com. Say you have such and such a theme with Visual Composer, and I will send you the discount information. So the next step is go ahead, click below, buy Visual Composer, send me the receipt, learn all about it in my complete course, and start building awesome stuff with Visual Composer. And that's how we create the parallax effect in Visual Composer. It's really simple. You do that once or twice, and you'll have it memorized, and you'll be able to do it in your sleep, which is pretty cool. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below the video. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And next up is clicking one of these videos to learn even more about WordPress or just carry on in this playlist and learn all about Visual Composer. And until next time, keep crushing with WordPress and I will see you in the next video.